capacitor testers. This video is somewhat in response to questions I've been getting recently posted on the community page and live streams and that. And we're mostly going to focus on the new Furnerge LCR ST2. This is a sponsored video. They did send me this. Uh, we're going to go through all of these. This is by the same company. I've been using this a lot recently and I'll go over why. This is an LC1020E. This is really just a big version of the little tweezers. And these so far from what I've been testing are completely awesome. So we'll just go through these and, and test them all out. Two of them I'm going to sort of eliminate uh, right at the beginning here. Start with the capacitor wizard. I've been using this for a long time. This only checks ESR at 100 kilohertz. And really at this point, now having these, what this is good for is checking for shorted semiconductors in circuit because it, it tests at a voltage below what turns on most semiconductors. So we'll just put this one off to the side because these also do ESR as well as a capacitance value. And then you have the old school iTube bridge. What this is good for, what I mainly only use this for is testing higher voltage paper capacitors for leakage. This will check for leakage at 50 to 450 volts. So for paper capacitors, wax capacitors, this is what you need. And you really don't even need this because those should just be replaced. If you're working on an old radio, old TV, uh, you know, the only time you'd really want this is if you had those or older orange and maroon drops and you wanted to see if they were paper or plastic. You know, I guess we're starting to see some of the plastic film capacitors degrade and go bad now so but this is really all I use that for so these are basically do the same thing they're an LCR bridge but they also tell you uh, the ESR the capacitor and you can select the voltage and frequency you want to test the capacitor at so for bigger microfarad electrolytics you want to use a lower frequency and the smaller the value the higher the frequency you want to use. Also, the voltage is selectable, which I haven't done it yet, but I'm sure you could use this to check for shorted semiconductors in circuit. For me, this is where this thing is really going to shine. This is a silver mica wafer out of a tran IF transformer and a radio. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and set this up and measure that thing. Okay, so that's resistance. We're at one kilohertz and we're at 0.6 volts. So there we're at capacitance. So down here where it says resistance, that's the ESR. So since this is a very small capacitor, I'm going to set this at 100 kilohertz. And then I'm going to pick this up in the tweezers and we'll see the value. Okay, it looks like that side is measuring 87 picofarads. It looks like the other side, which you can see is physically bigger, is measuring 103 picofarads. Now, I believe this is pretty accurate. I, I, would, I would use this to select a capacitor. Now this one will do all the same stuff and probably a little more. You can select the, the amplitude level. You can select the uh, frequency you're testing at. And you want to use 100 hertz for most electrolytics. And you can select... different 
testing, I only really use resistance, which is ESR. You can select Q and diode, and this will also do inductors and resistors, but so will this. But we're not doing inductors and resistors in this video because everything we do is capacitors, right? The fault of all electronics is capacitors. Here's a 100 picofarad silver mica. I think this is really accurate. Also comes with test leads. That you can just unplug this and plug these test leads in. I selected another one from the bag and this one's measuring 102. Let's do the electrolytics in this lovely vintage television set. So we got one, two, three. And we'll do the ESR and value on these. I'm not gonna look at the value. We'll just be able to see by the ESR if they're any good. Here's the first electrolytic section. And for electrolytics, you wanna set the, set the frequency down low, 100 Hertz. And I set the amplitude to 0.3. So this one is 92.29 microfarads and the ESR is 2.9 ohms. That's good. The next section is 39 microfarads at 9.7 ohms ESR. That's probably okay. It's a little tired. This is not telling you if the capacitors are shorted or leaky or need to be reformed. This is just telling you the value and the ESR. The next section is 26 microfarads at 9 ohms ESR. That's probably okay. Also, you need to make sure that the capacitors are fully discharged before you do this, because you'll blow this little thing apart. Okay, this one, not so hot. Two microfarads at 200 and 300 ohms, no good. Next section, 31 microfarads at six ohms. I guess that's acceptable, but since the first section's dead, it's bad. Okay, the next section, basically 40 microfarads at 4 ohms. That's okay. Uh, this one's just connected to ground on the chassis. First section of this one, 32 ohms, at, or 32 microfarads at 4 ohms. Not bad. Next section, 50 microfarads at 4.7 ohms. And measuring this dry electrolytic here, 27 microfarads at 13 ohms. That's kind of tired. Checking these bumblebee capacitors, which we know are all bad, or reforming the electrolytics, you need one of these. But like I said, this is not really necessary because if you're restoring one of these TVs, you're just going to replace all this stuff anyway. An area where this would really shine would be vintage transistor radios, checking the electrolytics. But with the whole tweezer thing, I think it's sort of made for surface mount. So let's try some surface mount stuff. Just try this board. We'll try one of these little orange tantalum capacitors. So that's obviously a 3.3 microfarad tantalum capacitor. Um, let's try this multi-layer ceramic or whatever these are called and it's measuring basically a hundred nanofarads uh, let's see here's a tantalum teardrop right here Could get on this thing five microfarads See, here's another multi-layer ceramic. What's that thing measuring? A hundred, a hundred microfarads. So that's probably because these 22s are all in parallel. And then that's in parallel with the 522 filters. 
Let's see, what's the ESR? Very, very low. Let's check this one. What is this one? This is a 47 at 63 volts. Let's see what we get here. Four hundred and fifty one. Oh, it's a four hundred and seventy. I'm sorry, it's a four seventy. So, what was the ESR on that thing? ESR is uh, sixty two milliohms. That's pretty good. So, yeah. This is kind of cool, and you're going to see me use a lot of this one. So basically, these two are kind of my go-to now for electrolytics and small value stuff like silver mica wafers. And yeah, you'll see me using... I'll include a link to this thing in the description. Uh, it's pretty low cost for someone who doesn't do a whole bunch of this. I think it's actually probably worth it. It also does resistors and inductors and all of that, but for the sake of this video, um, we're just going to do capacitors, and it's rechargeable, USB-C rechargeable. comes with this little handy carrying case, so have capacitor tester, will travel. I am the mobile capacitor testing machine for the internet.